or not as I push the button <laughs> and it's not working. You know, of course, that always happens, right? Mm -hmm. The test. Oh, here we go. All right. Good morning. I'm walking a mile with Rhonda Galat Marari. Good morning, Rhonda. How are you? Hey, good morning, Joe. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. So we're going to be talking about what it is that you are doing these days. You know, in the mm -hmm. in the concept of walk a mile, we're going to walk a mile together and talk about your music. Um, I've had a chance to listen to some of your tracks, and uh, of course, you you know I already love your stuff, so that's not not <laughs> a question. Uh, but where are you at with the project? We uh, we are working on on uh, completing an, uh, an album, a full length album. Uh, started quite a while ago, um, and we're getting closer. We have one song I have yet to do the vocals for, and then we have a couple of solos, uh, musicians to add to some of the songs. But hopefully, uh, it will be out early in this in 2025, as opposed to the fall of 2024. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I mean, de deadlines yeah. are kind of a moving target, right? Well, yeah, it is. I had some health issues. I had a back injury in June, and then I had a knee replacement. Oh, so boy. all that has, has added to the delay. Hard to mm -hmm. tap your foot if your knee is sore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, can't sing with a sore knee. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, so Rhonda, tell me what the, what the theme of the album is. I know you said that, that some of the songs were, were written and recorded maybe earlier. I, I'm really like so knocked out with the production values of what I've heard. And I'm curious to know, so those, so two things, where mm. are you recording and who are the musicians? Because, uh, clearly you've got some people who've got the same kind of chops as you have. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, for this album, which the, the working title is called love after all and i don't really uh consider myself a songwriter of love songs but then i you know i i, I kind of uh, reflected upon it and i realized yeah yeah they are love songs so that's the working title and i have a terrific producer ross nikophoric yep. of cosmic pad studios yep. and um he he's just got such a great ear and he's got a real good i think a pop kind of uh sound to his music and he's an incredible musician on, in his own right he's played with the pikes yep. as well so yep. um so you know i um i really we have a really good working relationship and he brings in some really good musicians so um for the for the material material that i've worked on with with ross we brought in he's brought in glenn ends who's a local drummer yeah yeah and uh gent laird who is incredible on bass and then um we he's gotten on several of my songs and throughout this this upcoming album will be the guitar of rich mcfarlane mm. and he's uh he's out of prince albert yeah uh, fantastic i am so excited uh, some of the um the solos that he's provided on the songs are amazing so i'm i'm really really excited and we're going to be looking at um adding a few more soloists to the um to some of the songs yeah, so that's yeah, yet to come nice nice so mm -hmm. interesting that your title your working title and it, it might change i guess but mm -hmm. i know how that goes but uh love after all so i mean because i i as i was listening to your stuff i'm going you know what these are love songs yeah 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 <laughs> whether i want them to be or not <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. uh, you know I, you know and i'll at the risk of embarrassing you, you know, you're, you're such a wonderful singer, that old expression about how you can sing this, the phone book and it would sound wonderful. Oh, oh you're yeah, very kind. Thank you. you. What you do, you have that, you have that uh, gift, right? That's uh, note pure. And, uh, and I was just, I love the way you use these cascading vocals. You know, oh. I don't know if that if that term makes sense or not, but mm. I'm thinking of this well, two songs actually, uh, "Pine for You" and "And I Think of You." Oh, yeah. you, ah, yeah. ah, 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 ah. you know, it's like, wow, how does she do that <laughs> so note perfectly? So, so tell me, do you, do you do you practice regularly? Do you do you practice singing? You know, regularly. Mm. Uh, well, I I try to, but that doesn't always happen. No, I have to say I'm pretty bad at doing. I, I should be more religious about it, to be honest. But, you know, like a lot of um, musicians who gig, they do a lot of practice before the gig. And I need to, you know, do it every day. And, yeah. um, you know, that's just that's got to be become part of the routine. So, I mean, I love singing. 
but um you know life does take have a way of taking over and sure yeah. sure what about yeah. keyboards i mean i know i've seen you play live you know with keyboards and what how much time do you spend practicing because i know a lot of people who who aren't musicians or maybe are are aspiring to be musicians mm -hmm. don't really get how much practice is required to stay good well you know just because when i sing i play so it, it kind of goes hand in hand. Although I am learning some Henry Mancini tunes, can you believe it? Wow. And, um, oh. and doing some note reading because I I am a survivor of the Royal Conservatory <laughs> music program and piano. And um, I always, it, it never sounded like my grandmother's stuff. Like she's my great, my grandma Alice was an incredible piano player, but she, she played a lot of jazz and stride no jazz. No kidding. And, yeah. You know, and, the conservatory music just didn't allow for you to, you know, have that kind of uh, fun. Not, not to say that I can play stride, stride jazz by any means. Um, I just kind of gave up on note reading and I'm getting back into it and finding some of my classical music just, just to kind of um, just, just to, to, to get better at doing that as well. Mm, and and mm. Uh, so when I practice keyboard, it's just generally when I'm singing, but, um, but, you know, you have to keep practicing because as you know, when you get into a performance um, atmosphere, there are all kinds of variables oh. that can throw you off. So yeah. you just need to, yep. to get into that, that routine. Yep. So, yep. Mm -hmm. focus, yeah. so yeah, you're catching me. <laughs> I don't practice nearly as much as I should. I don't like well, I'm not suggesting. Not listening. <laughs> oh, I'm not suggesting that you need to. I'm just what I, actually what yes. I was what I was yes. I thought I would hear is well, you know, I have a regime that I sort of do an hour a day, or you know, I got to try and get Oops. at least an hour a day or whatever. But uh, but I know I know how life gets in the road, and if you've got a gig mm -hmm. coming up, you want to get ready for it, and it's the whole uh, muscle memory thing is. You know the back and mm -hmm. forth between. I mean, I play guitar and sing, but I so piano. I'm I'm is very different. But I've always observed how you the you weave vocal and piano so nicely, right? They they sort of talk to you. It's like another voice, right? The piano yeah. is like another voice when you're performing, and and I think that's just a, I think that's just what happens when somebody spends enough time being a musician, right? Yeah, and and I think too for me personally, the songwriting comes hand in hand with the keyboard. We do it together, right. you know. And we I try out little riffs or whatever, and if they if they stick, then I continually add to them. And then uh, you know, I I put like just silly words in, you know, uh, placekeeper words until sure. I'm ready to sure. really focus. Right. Yeah. So, so okay. So the old, the age-old question, you know, what comes first for you, the melody oh. or or the lyrics? Uh, melody, or... melody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Always, eh? Yeah, yeah. No always. I, I tend to, you know, in the old days, I would just go to the piano and blindly just play a chord. It, you know, I didn't even know what the chord was, and then I would think about how I felt at the time, and then maybe if I really liked that chord then I would develop it into a song. And that was actually how I started writing songs. Huh. It's bizarre. And then I'd get into my chord book and say, well, what chord was that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then when the lyrics, so you say, okay, I've got this passage, you know, these this this melodic passage. Now I need to add some words to that to make it into a song. Mm -hmm. And so, so you must have some sort of uh, kind of broad landscape of ideas before you get started or no? Yes. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. For example, right now I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm writing a song about, uh, oh, you know, hopefully for one of my grandsons and I've got an idea of what, you know, what I want to say to him and, and, but just, I've got the melody, but I'm just piecing together the words so that they, they are subtle, you know, not, not hammering you on the head kind of a thing so yeah. that they can be used for anyone. Yeah. Kind of a thing. So, yeah. 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 Well, speaking of subtle, I just want to talk specifically about maybe a couple of songs. Uh, mm -hmm. Leave. I want to talk about Leave for a minute. Um, mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, you have, it, you know, again, I've listened to these songs perhaps three times, right? So, uh, it's not like I have an intimate knowledge or memory of how they go melodically. Mm -hmm. But here's what I remember about Leave. It's like you have this sort of gentle, conversation I, I, I the note i made was conversational in, in the way you delivered the lyrics and then all of a sudden you say just leave and i just mm -hmm. thought it was so powerful it was like holy cow i just got hit upside the head you know if i was the guy on the receiving end of that message i'd be going 
Wow. Oof. That was yeah. that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, and no, there's no uh, there was no confusion about what the message is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you thought it was a guy. Yeah, well, again, you know, assuming, right? So No, it, no, that's great. Because yeah. it, it, it can it, it you know, the songs are offered and they're taken in in the way that you receive them, right? And yeah. um and that wasn't my that wasn't my intent, but yeah. I'm I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> of course, I was making all <laughs> kinds of assumptions, right? So, yeah. So, so who is who is leaving? Who are you telling to leave? Because I also made some note of the, some of the lyrics. You know, mock my ways, you mock my ways. Mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. Uh, I don't want your false concerns. Just leave. Mm -hmm. Well, with that song, I was I was um, de I was deciding whether to leave my profession or not. And um, things were getting pretty tough. It was in the teaching world. And I, I just had so, ma so many duties with, with, you know, just being one person in it. Should I leave? And should I do music? Um, should I, right. you know, am I good enough? And really, right. It's, right. the leave is all about self-doubt. Yeah. And I wanted those thoughts to leave. I was, I was experiencing incredible insomnia. Oh, and yeah. um, I just couldn't stop these thoughts, these negative thoughts. And they were like sabotaging what I wanted to do. Yeah, and so that's basically yeah. is what I'm asking. Um, mm. You know, just leave, leave my head, leave right. me alone tonight so that I can actually sleep. And um, yeah. Yeah. It's so, so interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. So it's so interesting to, to, to get the details because like, you know, when you hear, when you observe some art, you listen to some music, we make all kinds of assumptions about what they mean. And so, I mean, in my head, it was like you were talking to somebody who was not respecting you. And so what mm -hmm. I'm hearing you say is that you weren't respecting yourself enough. Right. Right. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. So self interesting. Eh? Yeah. Self-doubt. Well, yeah. let's, uh, let's, uh, so the other song, I mean, I've got lots of notes here, but lots of songs, but pine for you, you know, the word pine is such an interesting word, right? I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. clearly, you know, it's one as a noun and then as a verb. Pining, what does it mean to pine for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And so the question became, so I, I, I kind of considered it to be an old-fashioned word, but, you know, and that's that was probably not appropriate, but pining seems like an old-fashioned word, so I looked it up in the dictionary. So is it about a lost love? Is it about a lost loved one? Or is it just, are you just exploring emotional ideas when you, when you, you know, when you ask the question or when you make the mm. statement, pine for you? Right. Actually, that song was an intentional song. I wrote it for friends who um, we we basically raised our kids together. We uh, they came from out east, and um, we grew very close. We we're like family, and uh, we yeah our, we we looked after each other's kids. We we do so many things together, and then they left to go to BC. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And uh, and basically um, that song I I wrote it for them. And then I, I created um, um, a video for them to go with that. So oh, it was all of our nice. pictures of what we had done together throughout the many, many years oh, that we were raising our kids. So, so nice. So a gift. It, so it was, it was a, a gift, gift to yeah. them. But, you know, it is so, it's almost, I would say it's universal. You know, it could be somebody leaving uh, to go to college. It could right, be, right. It could be anything, really. So yeah, I'm well. hoping it's taken as more of a universal well, I mean, uh, and the, the best art, right, is is uh, is always received. It's it's it becomes prophetic, right? Mm -hmm. So anybody can interpret it in a meaningful way for themselves. And of course, that's certainly true of that song, right? And, and I just want to shout out to Brad Prosco who uh, produced that one. That was a single, yeah. and he's uh, he's out of um, oh well, he, we recorded it at his place at Strasbourg, but um, he had Murray Pulver on that yeah. that piece. Um, Jason Brinkworth and Julian Bradford played bass. So um, I was really happy. It had a bit of a country feel to it as well. Yeah, and yeah. It, and I think pine in that case, yeah, it's kind of an old fashioned word. You don't hear it very often. It's true. Yeah, it's true. And it kind of it encouraged me to sort of like reconsider the word and go, wow, that's a really powerful word. So musically, like I, I made some notes just about it music and again, up tempo, swing, jazz, sax. I mean, there's a and you you there's a stand up bass that's prevalent in a couple of songs mm -hmm. um, and and I just get this sort of jazz orientation am I am I am I right? Yes, yeah, there is a little bit of a jazz orientation. I'm sorry, somebody's trying to call me here. Oh, 
Can you hear that? No. Nope. I hope not. Okay, nope. good. I'll keep, I'll carry on. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, a little bit of a jazz feel. Like I did Copperheaded Boys, kind of a jazz feel as well. And that was that was a fun song to do. Yeah. You know, with a stand up bass. So yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess maybe it's Ross Nikiforuks who who's kind of got his. Uh, let me let me say the 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 color I guess of mm-hmm. that's I would say if there was any sort of recurring musical sort of um, you know power uh, yeah. it would be with a jazz underpinning strong jazz underpinning yeah yeah yeah, yeah I would I would say in, in some of my songs for sure yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> some of these songs date back to a ways right like some of them were written quite a while ago I, I was looking yeah. you know you've you've re- released a number of singles. Mm-hmm. How many yeah. singles? How many singles do you think you've released? Oh my goodness, maybe five or six. Well, uh, you know, since 2012, and then I said, okay, 2014, let's do an album, and I did the album. Um, and hopefully, you can't hear that. <laughs> I have uh, <laughs> I have a message here that. Oh no, song. no, so no, I'm not. Okay, good. No. Uh, yeah, um, and then uh, I did "Under the Ink Black Sky," another single uh, dedicated to a family that had passed in a tragic accident, and so I've done. Oh, maybe I've done, I don't know, maybe seven in between yeah. albums. So, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the EP I did in 2020 was Star Drift. And man, that was a crazy time with the COVID yes. <laughs> because I had to cancel the CD launch twice. And so when we finally had it in 2022, I called it Third Time's the Charm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, I, I know of what you speak. Yeah. Um, Dance Against the Wind. Now, that was, uh, that was, I mean, I, I wondered if that was an album title. Yes. And uh, and I love that song. Uh, oh, I, I I also like some of the uh, the uh, ideas. Um, the the re- I'm picking out a lyric line here. Uh, the real of you come come through, right? Mm-hmm. So the real yeah. of you. Now talk a little bit about that. What is well, the real of a oh, person? Sorry. Yeah, I, I just find that so many people are looking to be some something they're not. Right. And I, I was a classroom teacher and I, and I could see it even in my own kids, like they, you know, try to fit into where they, where they think they should be. And they're kind of forgetting who they are. And I think, I think, you know, we can cover ourselves with makeup. We can cover ourselves with tattoos. We can, you know, we can have, we can look so different, but who are we really? And uh, I guess it's just like an empowerment song, Mm. uh, you know, for, like be yourself you you're you're enough you know and, right. and and it's just to you know be yourself and and you use your words you know carefully right and i think this is a song that is probably appropriate yes for this day yeah age. no it is it's 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 a good sort of uh, positive self-reinforcement right yeah <clears throat> yeah, yeah for exactly. sure there's a really powerful <laughs> message there well we could go on for hours but you know what we're <clears throat> we're coming up on the uh, the end of our uh, of our mile here, depending on how how fast we walk, right? <laughs> well, and my knee, you know, I've got a bad knee, <laughs> so we're walking <laughs> slow. You what, what we're saying, what you're saying is we're, we're slowing down. Yeah, um, maybe just talk of one, but one more song. We'll squeeze that in, and then I do want to sure. mention that we're going to be uh, sharing a project at the basement on November the twenty first. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking really forward to that. Uh, Ray Elliott and Darius and Delkman, you and I. Yeah. We'll share the stage. That should be fun. Yeah. Um, but first of all, let's uh, let's talk about let's go outside. Ah, yes. Okay. Well, that one was on my uh, EP first uh, EP in 2020, and I originally did it um, uh, as a music video and a song, and again recorded by Ross Nikifor, produced by him. And uh, that one was the result of um, a wonderful organization that I. I, I kind of belong to uh, nature uh, songs for nature, right. uh, and that's a wonderful uh, songwriting um, songwriting group that we meet try to meet once a year outside yeah. in in nature, and then from there comes some uh, you know inspiration. But we usually do a group song, and we were down at Kenosi Lake when this song I believe was was kind of born. And um, the the cool thing is I went on a um, a radio station, a provincial radio station. I don't know if I can say the name. Sure, sure. CBC, and I, I asked the, um, I asked the listeners if they could submit any songs of Saskatchewan, and um, and uh, they and they did for this project. So I wanted to make this music video kind of an homage to 
Saskatchewan landscape because it's not boring. No. It's beautiful. I just love this province, north and south, and 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 I got really great response from oh, listeners. Nice. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, and so we made that that music video. So it's on YouTube as well. And I just love the photographs. Yeah. And then um, just in 2022, I believe, I got contacted by a uh, Marzia Kam Kamyab Kamyabi. Uh, she's a female uh, music video producer who wanted to use that song for a Creative Sask uh, music oh, video. Nice, nice. But unfortunately, you have to have new music. So bless uh -huh. Ross Nickerfork's heart. He re we remixed that, wow. changed a few lyrics, and he gave it a little bit of a different flavor. And um, we were able to submit it. And then um, it was last year, last uh, spring, um, we made the music video uh, east of Regina, and um, it, it, it was it was wonderful. It was a lot of fun. So, um, so, so it's got really two iterations. That right, song, right. let's go so outside on YouTube. Yeah. Is it available on YouTube? Available on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, both videos. Nice. Oh, <laughs> so it's cool. pretty confusing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But well, again, it's just to celebrate being outside in nature because it really is. I yeah. think it's the best medicine ever. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you there's yeah. a bit of. I'm going to use the term religious um, sort of underpinnings there, not to be in the church sense religious, but, yes. um, but you know, the yes. word sanctified and sacred place and, uh, and yeah, I, I totally agree. Yes. Grassy pews. Mm. And I thought I might get some backlash about that, but so far nothing. So well, <laughs> well and so, so what, I guess too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not understanding it's, me if there's like a, if there's, if there's that kind of backlash, right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. we're, we, we gotta, we gotta stop now. Oh, that's too yeah. Bad. Well, thanks a lot, Rhonda, for doing this. Well, thank you so much, Joe. And um, I am really looking forward to the 21st of November yeah. at the basement. It's yeah. going to be a fun night. And I, um, I only uh, performed with Dara Shindelka once before, just before COVID hit on a, in a Women's Day event. So I'm looking forward to meeting up right. with her again yeah, and yeah, yeah. and uh, seeing you and Ray. So, yes, for sure. Look yeah. forward to it too. Right. Well, thanks, Rhonda. Right. Thank you so much, Joe.